to my channel. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over some tips that my naturalistas can use before applying heat to their hair. So whether that means you're going to get your hair blow dried, you're gonna put a hooded dryer over your hair, just anything that involves exposing your natural hair or your curls to heat. Um, I just wanna give you some tips and tricks to use before you go ahead and apply that to your hair. Oftentimes, as naturals, we tend to think I can't use any heat in my hair. I have to completely cut off using heat in my hair regimen, which isn't necessarily true. You just have to be more cautious in the way that you approach putting heat on your hair. So if you'd like to learn more, please keep watching. So my first tip is to make sure that your hair is prepped. What do I mean when I say prepped? Three things come to mind. The first is to make sure that your hair is deep conditioned. So when you apply heat to your hair, it's automatically and purposely trying to remove moisture from your hair. So specifically with a blow dryer, when you're applying a blow dryer to your hair, the air from the blow dryer is pushing out the moisture on the external shaft of your hair. That's fine because we want to have dry hair if we're trying to blow dry our hair. But in the process, what we don't want to happen is for our inter internal moisture or the moisture that's absorbed from doing deep conditioners is not removed. So you just wanna make sure that your hair is deep conditioned prior to so that your hair still has moisture to sustain its strength and for your curls to sustain their shape. So deep conditioning is, is extremely important. Without it, your hair is gonna be very brittle. It can be very dry and prone to breakage. Your hair should also be protein treated. So you should be doing some sort of protein treatment prior to applying heat to your hair. When heat is applied to your hair, protein is often broken down. The heat breaks down protein bonds and oftentimes those protein bonds are what keeps our curls tight. It's what keeps our hair strong and our strands from our hair strong. So you just wanna make sure that you do use a protein treatment. It doesn't have to necessarily be days before your hair is blow dry. So if you did a protein treatment about two to three weeks ago, your hair will be fine to go ahead and be exposed to heat. Lastly, you wanna make sure that your hair is cleansed. So make sure that you wash your hair before you apply heat to it. Applying heat to dirty hair will actually bake the sweat and the salts and the oils that are in your hair, which damages the cuticle layer of your hair. The cuticle layer of your hair is important. It is what provides strength and protection for your hair. So if that is damaged by applying heat to dirty hair, the rest of your hair is likely to get damaged as well. So you wanna make sure that your hair is deep conditioned, that it is protein treated, and that it is clean before applying heat to your hair. Secondly, and this is super big for me, I would say bring your own product. So if you're doing your hair at home, that's fine. You know what you like, you know what's good to your hair. But if you're going to a hair salon, you don't know what these hair salons are using. They're not always necessarily natural hair friendly and sometimes they just use what gets the job done or what's cheapest. So you wanna make sure you use products that you know are friendly to your hair, are healthy for your hair, and will allow your hair to get its best results. Three, use a heat protecting tool before applying heat to your hair. Super, super important. So when I mention heat protectants, one of the heat protectants that I like to use is Tresemme's um, heat tamer. So it protects against heat damage and it's a leave-in spray. So it looks like this. And as you can see, it reads that it protects against 450 degrees of heat. So good heat protectants, such as like hairsprays or serums, usually have silicones that help slow down the heat transfer from whatever tool you're using to your hair. That way your hair is only exposed to a certain degree of heat at a certain rate, which will allow it to dry and get straightened, but won't cause so much damage to your hair. Step number four, lower the temperatures of your heating tools. So whether it's a blow dryer or a flat iron, you wanna set the temperature to a cooler degree and use it for a longer amount of time instead of exposing your hair to a lot of heat within a quicker amount of time. So for example, as opposed to blow drying my hair for half an hour on high, I would blow dry my hair to 45 minutes on warm. That way my hair is able to handle the heat degree 
but it also has a little bit more time to get straightened. Increasing the heat temperature and the tools that you use for your hair actually causes your hair to experience water loss as well as protein loss, which is not good for your hair fibers. So again, you wanna make sure that you're lowering the degree of heat on your tools and just using them for a little bit longer because even though it might take you an extra 15 minutes at this moment, it'll save you from a lot of time in repairing any damage on your hair in the future. So less is more in this situation. I will say also that exposing your hair to a lot of heat or a high degree of heat allows your hair to be more prone to split ends. And when you have split ends, you'll often find yourself trimming your hair more than you should. And it also can lead to breakage, which is not good for people who are trying to grow out their hair because if your hair is constantly breaking, you have to sacrifice other parts of your hair that might be healthy just so that when you cut your hair, it's at an even length or at an even layer. And that's sacrificing other pieces of hair that are growing just so you can repair the hair that you damage because of breakage. We can avoid all of that if we can just use tools at a lower degree of heat for a little bit more time. Number five, I would say is minimize hair manipulation. So oftentimes we straighten our hair, which is manipulating your hair already, but then we're changing our hairstyles every single day, pulling on our hair, putting ponytails with tight scrunchies, all of that stuff takes a toll on your hair. Even though you see little strands might be coming out and it doesn't seem like a lot, it is causing your hair to break, which is in turn messing up the growth of your hair. So you just wanna make sure that you manipulate your hair as minimal as possible just so your hair can grow and be as healthy as it can be. And number six would be to use tools such as scarves, gels, and conditioners to help flatten your hair. Oftentimes, I know with myself when my hair is straight and I go outside and it's humid outside or it's raining, my hair can get messed up, it'll get really frizzy or it's not as straight as it was when I first left the house and I'm tempted to come home and flatten my hair with a flat iron just so that it's straight again. That is a no-no. You wanna stay away from using the flat iron or reapplying heat when your hair is already straight as much as possible. Little tips that you can use instead are things like using products that are not so water-based such as gels or conditioners and applying them to your hair and then putting a scarf over your hair so that your hair can flatten. When you flatten your hair, when you brush it and then you tighten it or you put it in a ponytail and you put a scarf over it, the hydrogen bonds in your hair stretch so that your hair can stay to that style. And if you keep it that way, your hair is gonna remember it and it's gonna stay that way. So just putting maybe some conditioner, for example, if your baby hairs get a little frizzy and then putting a scarf over it for a few hours or even for half an hour will make a significant difference and will make your hair flatter. Applying heat to your hair or taking a little, taking the flat iron and flat ironing your baby hairs, it's just causing more damage to your hair and it's not necessary. There are other techniques that we can use to flatten our hair. So those are the tips and tricks that I have for you guys. I hope you try them out. Please let me know if you have any other tips or any other tips that I said that you think work for you already. And just remember, try to expose your hair to heat as little as possible if you can. If you're just starting off with your natural hair journey, I would say stay away from heat for, I would, I wanna say anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks just so your hair can repair itself and get used to being in its natural state. And if you really wanna put heat in your hair again, I would say put heat in your hair maybe once every two weeks. And then when you see your hair getting healthier, if you need to, then you can use heat in your hair once a week. But just try to stay away from it as much as possible because again, your hair is naturally not in that state and constant exposure to heat, it's not natural to your hair. So it's not gonna be the healthiest technique for your hair. Less is more, and the more protective techniques that you use for your hair, the more healthier your hair will be in the long run. Thank you guys again for coming back to my channel, and please do not forget to like and subscribe. Press the thumbs up button down below and the subscribe button down below if you would like to see more videos. Until next time, bye.